Hi everyone. In the previous lectures on uh, the the course operational amplifiers, we discussed how to analyze op amp circuits with both positive and negative feedback. And we said that if the negative feedback dominates the positive feedback, you have to comp you have to compute the loop gains taking both the negative feedback loop and positive feedback loop into account. And we said that if the negative feedback is greater than the positive feedback, then in a single op amp circuit, I can use this condition V plus the, the inverting and the non inverting terminals will follow each other. This condition is naturally, I mean, you can use this condition if uh, the overall loop is a ne the negative feedback gain loop gain is greater than the positive feedback loop gain. Okay, then we know that the negative feedback dominates overall. So we can analyze the circuit conventionally making this assumption. So some of you, I think, post a question, what happens if you have a positively fed back circuit and the loop gain is less than one, can I still use this condition? Now, before I answer that question, I'll just quickly refresh your memory as to uh, about negative feedback systems. So shown here is a general representation of a single op-amp circuit where A here represents the op-amp, a single op-amp circuit with a fee negative feedback. Now we know the error signal here is given by, a, it's a small fraction of the input signal which is 1 by A beta. In a negatively fed back system, A beta is infinity. If your loop gain is infinity, then the error goes to 0 because this uh, it will be since error is a much smaller fraction or input divided by the loop gain the higher the loop gain the lower will be your error so this is nothing but v plus and v minus terminals so they both come to near same potentials but what if i have positive feedback if i have positive feedback where the loop gain a beta is less than one okay so we said if you have positive feedback uh, just to clarify one more point that if you have a loop gain, I, I mean for a negative feedback system, um, let's assume there are no poles in the system as of now or it, at max it has one single pole. Then uh, for a negative feedback system, whatever be the value of loop gain, the system is unconditionally stable. It doesn't depend on the magnitude of the loop gain. It is unconditionally stable. So therefore, it doesn't matter even if I have an infinite loop gain, it really doesn't affect stability. In fact, it's better, the error becomes smaller and smaller. Whereas in case of a positively fed back system, we said you cannot have arbitrarily any value for the loop gain. But for the error to go to zero, you need a beta to be infinity. In a positively fed back system, the error is given by x upon 1 minus a beta. I mean, the minus sign represents the positive feedback. If a beta cannot be greater than 1, it has to be less than 1 because a beta cannot be greater than 1 for stability reasons. So it has to be less than 1. We saw that in the previous uh, lectures in a positively fed back system, if your loop gain is greater than 1, then your positively fed back system can become unstable. We took an example of a single pole positively fed back system and showed that, okay, how it can become unstable. Now, here in case of a, a positively fed back system, the error is given by x upon 1 minus a beta. Since a beta is less than 1, this term x by 1 plus 1 minus a beta will not be 0. Okay, So uh, smaller a beta, the more stable the positive feedback system will be and therefore um, the error will not be 0 in case of a positively feedback system. Okay, so to illustrate this, so in that case, especially for a single op amp circuit, you uh, it's not, it's in fact very difficult to picture a single op amp circuit with a loop gain less than one. Okay, if, uh, I mean you you cannot use this. All I'm trying to tell you is that immediately, if you have a single op amp circuit with positive feedback and somehow you're able to get a loop gain less than one, you cannot use this condition. V plus will not be equal to V minus. Okay, so if you look at a single op amp circuit, let's assume A is the op amp, then beta should be much smaller. For your loop gain to be less than 1, beta should be less than 1 by A. Because A beta should be less than 1, beta should be less than 1 by A. You should satisfy this condition. Okay, since for an op amp, generally the gain is a much larger value, uh, to get beta much smaller, 1 by A may not be as trivial. 
okay so but what i'm going to do is i'll take an example of a circuit and try to show you how that if you have positive feedback uh, you might get a stable output so mind you here uh, the condition a beta less than 1 loop gain being less than 1 only guarantees that the output is bounded if input is bounded output is also bounded so that it only guarantees that condition that's it it doesn't guarantee error being equal to 0 for error to be equal to 0 a beta has to be infinity but if a beta is infinity i cannot use a positively fed back circuit i mean that will become unstable i can only use negative feedback okay that's one explanation but we'll take up an example and see i mean this condition doesn't hold true and we'll see how to probably you can even simulate and check yourself i'll give an example so first before we uh, think of a circuit a positively fed back circuit consisting of op amp op amps um, with a loop gain less than one first we'll think of how to get a feedback factor much less than one so shown here is a circuit so this part here is a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of two i've applied input here and i'm feeding the output through an op amp open loop op amp okay so the gain of this op amp let's assume is a I'm feeding the output at the inverting terminal. So the output at this point, the voltage that is being fed back is minus A. Now, if you see here at this node, this is the error voltage. That is actually an average of because I have two resistors of same value. It's actually VI plus the fed back quantity. So rather VI minus A V naught by two. So that's the error voltage that's appearing at this point. Now, if you see, I can draw an equivalent mathematical model for this. So, you have the output voltage V0. If you look at this equation, this is the error voltage. This is the error voltage here. I'm going to assume this op amp here is an ideal op amp with a gain of infinity. So, from error to output, the gain is 2. So, V0 is 2 times VE. So, that's what I've written here. The gain is 2. I have represent this, represented this in a non-inverting amplifier as a, bl a black box with a gain of 2. Output is fed uh, with, a, with a gain of A here. Okay. And then there is a factor half through the potential divider before I come to the error signal. So that's why I have written A by 2 here. And if you see there is a negative sign, it's minus of A0. So that negative sign I have included in the adder. So at this point I have included. So at the input of the adder what you are getting the negative sign is included here what you are getting here is a v naught by 2 and the input signal vi is getting multiplied by a factor half and appearing in front of the add so the total error signal here is given by this equation vi by 2 minus a naught uh, a v naught by 2 okay so this is minus uh, a v naught by 2 so in this block diagram, if you look at this circuit, um, if I assume A is infinity, if I assume A is infinity, you can directly write this expression for this loop. It's a negatively fed back loop. You can see that this is a negatively fed back loop because uh, the overall loop gain, the phase shift is 180 degrees in this loop. You start from this point, V naught, you go through a negative sign here and uh, yeah, so you go through, go to this point it's a positive sign invert non-inverting amplifier so the overall loop you undergo a phase shift of 180 degrees so therefore it's a negative loop negative feedback loop so since it's a negative feedback loop i can directly use so if uh, if i assume a is infinity if a is infinity then the loop gain is given by a by 1 plus a beta will be approximately 1 by beta itself and here beta here is 2 by a so if a is infinity um, you will get this part this part here the upper part reduces to 2 by a a is very large i'm sorry if a here loop gain is much greater than 1 i can approximate the gain to be 1 by beta so then that will simply be 2 by a multiplied by half the forward path gain you will get an overall gain as 1 by a okay so now i have a block which will give me a gain which is equal to 1 by the gain of an op amp so that's my goal of um, introducing this circuit. So I'm just trying to simply construct a hypothetical circuit and show you 
that you know in case of a positively fed back system with a loop gain even though the loop gain is less than 1 you won't end up having v plus equal to v minus okay so this circuit mind you this local circuit this is a negative feedback circuit so therefore uh, since i have grounded this node if this op amp is an ideal op amp with a gain of infinity if a is infinity then v naught will be equal to 0 so v naught will be equal to 0 so which means this node will also come to ground okay but if a is not infinity and a is finite then actually i can derive an exact expression also but approximately it will be 1 by a in fact we can easily derive an exact expression so the loop gain it will be half into the closed loop gain of this this guy it will be 2 upon 1 plus a so what you will get is 1 by 1 plus a so the loop gain of this guy will be 1 by 1 plus a the gain of this guy from input to output is 1 by 1 plus a so what i am trying to show in this example is that i have an op amp based circuit with a gain given by 1 by the gain of an op amp so I just put the op amp in the feedback path, I will be able to get a negative feedback circuit then approximately if the loop gain is very high, I will be able to get 1 by beta and beta happens to be A, the op amp gain itself. Now I am going to use this circuit in an op amp based, in another op amp based circuit so that I get a loop gain less than 1. So that is what I am going to do. So this is a pure negatively fed back circuit, there is no positive feedback in the circuit but this circuit is giving me a gain of 1 by 1 plus a. Now this is a circuit I am going to show here, I am mean, going to construct here. So this circuit we have just seen in the previous example, the loop gain of this circuit is 1 by 1 plus a. Now what am I doing here? I am taking my input signal applying at the negative terminal. Now if you trace this loop, if you trace this loop here, so I am going from this point and to the output this is a positively fed back loop so from this point to this point the gain is 1 by 1 plus a and from uh, the output so from the output it is 1 by 1 plus a so when we come to this node here it's going to be half it's a resistive divider so we will get uh, 1 by 2 into 1 plus a and multiply it with a because when i reach this point here uh, for, traversing through the op amp the loop gain to this point is going to be a by 2 into 1 plus a this will be the loop gain in this circuit now i'm going to assume a to be a much larger number so if you see this value will since it is a by 1 plus a is less than 1 and half of that will obviously be less than 1 so loop gain is less than 1 and it's a positively fed back circuit okay we will first calculate assume a to be a much larger number and try to estimate what will be the output voltage V0 in terms of VI in the circuit. So what I have shown here, I have constructed a circuit, an op amp based circuit, a positively fed back op amp based circuit with a loop gain less than 1. And to construct that, I needed a negatively fed back op amp based circuit with a gain of 1 by the op amps gain. Only then I will be able to get a loop gain less than 1 in an op amp circuit. Otherwise, using resistors, I may not, I mean, uh, practically it will be very difficult to get that. Okay. So now, in this circuit, uh, what we are going to do, I will just try to draw a block diagram representation for this. Uh, the loop gain is approximately half, uh, what I have just shown right now, a by 1 plus a into 2. Um, but if a is much greater than 1, it will be approximately half and it is a positively fed back circuit. We can also draw a mathematical model for the circuit to show you okay where is positive feedback and where is negative feedback. Now first quickly to see here this here is a negatively fed back loop. So the gain for the dotted box I can directly write the gain as 1 by it is here to be precise it is 1 by 1 plus a. This is the gain of the dotted box here. Now for the amplifier if you see. Uh, half of it is being fed back so through a resist you have a resistive divider here half of it is being fed back so you have a feedback factor of half from the output signal and the input signal i can take the minus sign separately and write minus vi and plus here okay i can do that 
um, so that's what I've done in the block diagram as well so what I've done here is that I've taken vi minus separately so what you have here is minus vi and the signal which is fed back which is v naught by 2 that's being fed back the error signal uh, at this point at the out this is the output of the first op amp that will be a into v naught by 2 minus vi that's the output okay so that's the output here and that's what you'll be getting here as well so this here is v naught the voltage at the input of the op amp will be v naught by 2 the output of the op amp is going to be v naught by 2 minus vi into a so it captures everything the circuit in this block diagram we have captured everything here now if i assume a to be much greater than 1 if you see the forward path gain the loop gain is a by 1 plus a into half the forward path gain um, i'll assume a to be much greater than 1 if a is much greater than 1 then um, this is a positively fed back loop this part is a positively fed back loop and i can assume a a by 1 plus a to be approximately equal to 1 so the loop reduces to something like this here so the forward path gain is just 1 and on the feedback path you have a gain of half so the loop gain will the overall closed loop gain will be 1 by 1 minus half loop gain is half now so it will be gain of 2 since you have a minus sign here at the input so the overall gain will be minus 1 into 2 so minus 2 so that's the output you should expect in the circuit you should expect a gain of minus 2 in the circuit now we'll look at the op amp uh, ter terminal node voltages and see whether you know this v plus is equal to v minus or not let vi be the input signal we just approximately said that output can be approximated to minus 2 vi if this output is minus 2 vi the inverting the non-inverting terminal will be half of it it's a potential divided version so that will be minus vi so immediately you can see here that this condition no longer holds true your inverting and non-inverting terminal voltages are no longer the same okay in fact it's violated in two op amps it's violated in this op amp and it's also violated in this op amp here in both these op amps um, the inverting and non-inverting terminals will not be even nearly seen uh, if you have a finite gain a in a negatively fed back system it will be very close to i mean it will be approximately 1 by a times some so you will have some error which is proportional to 1 by a but here if you notice the error is independent and it's 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 huge okay it's independent of a approx if i assume a to be much greater than 1 it is almost independent of it the error is 2 va in this case here it is VI, it's, uh, here also it's 2 VI for both these op amps. Okay, so what you can show is that if you simulate the circuit assuming a finite gain, uh, you should ensure that uh, the simulator doesn't give you any errors if these node voltages go to very high values. Uh, that's if, as long as you are within the limits that the simulator permits, uh, you should be able to simulate the circuit and see for yourself that these two op amps in spite of you having a high gain you, you can choose something in the order of 10 cube or 10 power 5 and see that apply small inputs so that the simulator doesn't flag any error for exceedingly large order because the output of the op amps are going to be really large so what will happen here is that because this v plus is not equal to v minus the output of the op amp here both these op amps is going to be extremely large but the error signal here uh, you can very easily show assuming a finite gain it will it will approximately be equal to vi okay so that's how approximately you will get the output as 2vi i mean it will be minus vi so you will get minus 2vi even though these two signals the output of this op amp and this op amp are exceedingly large really large values the average of the two they will be out of phase with each other the average the error signal will be very close to minus vi so that um, this block the output it's going to just amplify and give you minus 2 vi so what you see here is that i've just taken a circuit with positive feedback in it and uh, so this circuit here there is a local negative feedback but i can just treat it as a black box with a gain of two okay so there is a local negative feedback in the loop in fact even there is one more negative feedback here also but globally this, this is a positive feedback positively feedback system you have a positive feedback loop here 
okay and that dictates the overall stability of the system and in such a case what we have seen here is that v plus does not necessarily follow v minus and I showed you under what conditions, especially if you have just a single op-amp. If you have a single op-amp, then for V plus to follow V minus, it has to be a negatively fed back circuit. Because the moment it's a negatively fed back circuit, any op-amp based circuit, any op-amp based circuit automatically has a loop gain of infinity. A beta is automatically infinity in all those circuits. Which is why we assume the error is zero, which means V plus should be equal to V minus. Since the op-amp, uh, the loop gain is infinity, error will automatically go to zero which means v plus will be equal to v minus but in case of a positively fed back systems since a beta has to be less than one loop gain has to be less than one for it to be stable you can no longer make that assumption okay and keep in mind i'm very clear here that the global feedback is positive you can always tell me i have some you can have a local positively fed back loop uh, which is uh, you know uh, which is stable and uh, overall loop can be negative feedback maybe somewhere in that case the op amps in which is in the negative overall loop being negative feedback there the op amps positive and negative terminals may be tracking each other but uh, if you have a global positive feedback they will not okay i've taken an example and shown you guys that if you have a, a positive local a global positive feedback loop I, uh, we, can, we, we can see that both these op amps here don't track the outputs of I mean the V plus and V minus don't track each other okay and even if you as you keep in, even if you keep increasing the loop gain A here you will end up getting a finite output and uh, the inverting and non-inverting terminals will no longer track each other so if you have any doubts you can post in the comments I'll try to answer them or if you have any clarifications regarding this, um, you, can, you can post in the comments. Thank you.